From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Max Lancer, Mr. Dollar, DA's office. Oh? The coroner tells me you're cutting yourself in on this Jonathan Wells thing. I'm representing the insurance company. Wells carried a $50,000 policy payable to his widow. Yeah, so I hear. What about the autopsy? Any results? Not yet. The coroner's still working on it. I understand it was Wells' daughter who called you fellas in on this case. Yes, on the advice of her family doctor. I know, I talked to him. Only his version puts a different slant on things. What do you mean? Well, he thought she was suffering from temporary hysteria. He was only trying to calm her. He didn't think she'd really fly back to Hartford and stir up a mess like this. I see. Her father's sudden death must have been quite a shock to her. It may have caused her to uh, imagine things. Things like murder? Maybe. It's possible, anyway. What do you think? I think I'll wait for the results of that autopsy, Mr. Lancer. I'll keep in touch. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Northwestern Surety Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, The Lonely Hearts Matter. Location, Chicago, Illinois. Expense account continued. Item six, two dollars and ten cents for a late lunch at my hotel. I finished it, went up to my room and started trying to fit the few facts I had into some kind of a pattern that made sense. Max Lancer at the DA's office might be right. Maybe it was nothing more than just hysterical suspicion. And she'd admitted herself that she was hurt and jealous when he married Mabel Burke. Sudden death could still be natural death. And yet, all I could do at the moment was wait for the results of that autopsy. Yeah? Mr. Dollar. Mm, Who is it? It's me, Norma Wells. Oh, all right. Just a minute. Come in. Come in, Miss Wells. Thank you. What's wrong? I'm scared. Of what? I don't know exactly. Oh? Well, here. Here. Run over here and sit down. Oh, thank you. Yeah. No, what do you mean you don't know exactly? Could I be be losing my mind, Mr. Dollar? (laughs) If you were, you'd be the last one to think so. Now, tell me what's happened. Well, I, I went to the coroner's office to sign the authorization for the autopsy and then went back to my apartment. And a little while... Later, the phone rang, and when I answered it, there was nobody on the line. A wrong number, maybe. No. I mean, I mean, there was somebody on the line, but they didn't say anything. I kept saying hello, and then there was a click, and, and the line went dead. And that's all that happened? No. A short time afterward, I, I heard footsteps out in the hall. They stopped at my door, and I kept waiting for someone to ring the bell. When they didn't, I... I finally got up enough courage to open the door. There was nobody there. I see. A few minutes after that, the phone rang again. The same thing as before. I couldn't stay there any longer. I ran out and got a taxi and came here. Well, who do you think might be doing a thing like that, Miss Wells? I don't know. But somebody is. I'm not just imagining things. Max Lancer, the DA's investigator, seems to think you might be. I know. He talked to me at the coroner's office. That's why I came to you, Mr. Dollar. You've got to help me, please. Be glad to, but how? There must be something you can do. Yeah, yeah, I can wait for that autopsy report. And at the moment, that's about all I can do. Without some definite evidence of a crime, something stronger than mere suspicion, we don't have a leg to stand on. But but suppose the report doesn't show anything. Well, then I wipe the egg off my face and go back to Hartford. But, but look, maybe she was... She was clever enough to kill my father in some way that wouldn't show up in an autopsy. Such as? I don't know. But I do know, as sure as I'm sitting here, that she married him and got him to take out that insurance policy with the full intention of murdering him. Well, such things have been known, all right. Somebody using a correspondence club to contact wealthy pigeons. Did you know that your stepmother owns that Lonely Hearts Club? Owns it? That's what the girl in charge told me. A Fanny Tetler. Do you know her? No. I've never heard of her. 
Neither Mabel nor my father ever mentioned that she owned the place. She apparently has somebody running it for her, a man, I think. Any idea who he might be? No. He slipped out before I got a chance to see him. Smoked cigars. He left one burning in the ashtray. Wait. Maybe it's Burton. Burton? Burton Creeley, her nephew. He smokes cigars. Oh, that's the first I've heard of him. Oh, he's detestable. He moved in on us right after Mabel and my father were married. He's the main reason why I left the house. I couldn't stand him. He was always after me, bothering me. Is he still living there? I guess so. Was he in the house the night your father died? Yes. At least he was when I got there. That was an hour afterward, as I told you. Does he have a job, work anywhere? I don't think he's ever worked. He lives off of her. Uh Uh-huh. He and your father get along all right? Oh, my father could get along with anyone. He always managed to see the best in people. And then Burton was careful to to act different around him. I see. I suppose you think that's some more of my imagination. Frankly, Miss Wells, I don't know what to think. There was only some way to prove what I'm sure of. Well, let's wait for that autopsy report. Meantime, I think I'll go out and talk to your stepmother. What about me? Stay right where you are. Don't go out of this room. When I get back, we'll pick up some things from your apartment, and you can check in here at this hotel for a few days. (laughs) Expense account item 7, taxi to Lakeshore Drive and the beachfront residence of the late Jonathan Wells. I was beginning to feel more and more like a fool. It looked as though Max Lancer might be right. Apparently, a jealous, hysterical girl had lost her head and stirred up a nasty mess, all without one single fact to back up her suspicions. I had a hunch the autopsy report was going to show death from natural causes. For two cents, I'd have thrown the case over. In fact, I didn't even see where I had a case. Good afternoon, young man. How are you? How do you do? Are you Mrs. Wells? Yes, that's right. Is there something I can do for you? My name is Dollar, Johnny Dollar. I'm representing the company that holds the insurance policy on your late husband's life. Oh, well, you must be mistaken. Mr. Morningby represents that company, young man. Mr. Matthew R. Morningby. Uh, Mr. Morningby is the local agent. I'm from the home office in Hartford, Connecticut. Oh, I see. Yes, I have my credentials right here if you'd like to see Oh, no, 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 that isn't necessary. I always judge people by their faces. And you have an honest face, Mr. Dollar. Thank you. I wonder if I could ask you a few questions, Mrs. Wells. Well, I suppose so. I know this must be painful for you, and I'll try to be as brief as possible. Oh, well, now, don't you worry about me. I'm all right. Of course, I miss Jonathan and all that. He was a terribly nice man, terribly. But I think of death as just being a doorway to a greater and more glorious life. Well, that's uh, one way of looking at it. You just come right in, young man, and ask all the questions you're a mind to. Thank you. You come right in here, and we'll sit down and have a nice chat. Oh, this is a very attractive house, Mrs. Wells. Oh, yes, yes, I think so, too. Jonathan built it years ago. He and his first wife lived here, you know. Of course, I've changed the drapes and things. Uh, Just some of the little things sit right down there now. Thank you. And his daughter, too. Uh, She lived here the first month we were married, and then she moved into town. Oh, a strange little thing, really. Sort of uh, nervous and irritable. I've met her, Mrs. Wells. Oh, well, then you know what she's like. Oh, it's too bad, too. Would you like some tea and cookies, Mr. Dollar? Uh, No, thanks. That's one thing Jonathan wouldn't miss for the world. His tea and cookies at four o'clock every afternoon. Every afternoon. The house just doesn't seem the same without him. No, I imagine it doesn't. That's how I won his heart, you know, with my cookies and cakes. Oh? Oh, he really did adore them. And it was such a pleasure baking things for a person who appreciated them so much. Yes. It makes you feel lonesome and lost not having anybody to cook for. Do you ever feel lonesome, Mr. Dollar? Well, I guess everybody does at times. Why, at the time I met Jonathan, I was feeling so lonesome I could just cry. Mr. Burke had died two years before. Mr. Burke? Yes, he was my husband before, Jonathan. That was in St. Louis, of course. I see. Oh, he was a fine man, too. Walter Mabley Burke. Tall and handsome and impressive looking. Just like his name sounds. And a perfect picture of health. Right up to the day he died. His death was sudden? Unexpected? Oh, yes. A complete surprise. Acute indigestion, the doctor called it. Mm. Of course, I don't think he was quite as thoughtful as Jonathan. Jonathan was always so considerate, and he he was a... Oh, my gracious, here I go, just rambling on and on. You didn't come here to listen to my silly little affairs. No, 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 they're very interesting. Well, I've always tried to keep busy and keep my mind occupied. That's why I started in business. The Lonely Hearts Club. Oh, well, you've heard about it. 
well, I admit I felt kind of foolish at first about starting it. I mean, you know how people josh about those kinds of clubs. It was Burton's idea, really. He's my nephew, you know. Oh, dear, I wish he were here this afternoon so you could meet him. So do I. He's such a nice boy. He thought I'd do real well at that kind of business, and he was right, too, absolutely right. Oh, not money, you understand, but it was loads of fun meeting all those nice people, especially men, yes. I see. That's how I met Jonathan. So I was told. That's the way it happened. He wrote into the club, and I sent him my picture, and that's what started it. I remember when Burton showed me the letter, he said, Aunt Mabel, this one sounds like your kind of man, and he certainly was, too. Uh -huh. Does Burton help you with the club? Oh, well, he runs it, really. He's such a sweet boy, and he works so hard. I just don't know what I'd do without Burton. I don't know what I'd do. Yes, I imagine he's a great comfort to oh, you. Oh, you have no idea, Mr. Darling. I suppose not. Well, I guess I'd better run along, Mrs. Wells. It's been such a pleasure talking with you. It seems like young folks nowadays don't often have the gift for conversation the way they did in my time. Well, things move faster today. Well, I certainly hope that company of yours moves fast, young man. Well... I have to start house hunting, you know. The estate and everything goes to Jonathan's daughter, and all I have is the insurance. Yes. Oh, it's such a bother, Mr. Dollar, the funeral and moving and all the details. Seems like I just have the worst luck with my husband's. I walked out of there groggy, my head spinning. No wonder Norma Wells was nervous and hysterical. I felt that way myself after only a few minutes of it. And I still had no case, not one piece of evidence. I'd had a pleasant chat with a sweet old lady, a little on the dotty side maybe, but that was all. Dead end. Max Lancer from the DA's office was waiting for me in the hotel lobby. You'll notice I'm holding my hat in my hand, Mr. Dowling. How come? It's a symbol of humility. You were right all along. According to the coroner's report, Jonathan Wells died from a dose of ground glass. So it's murder after all. Then in that case, do something for me, will you? From now on, I'm your man. Contact the authorities in St. Louis and have them check into a death that happened there about two and a half years ago. A man named Walter Maberly Burke. Who's he? Mrs. Wells was married to him at the time. Uh-oh. Another murder? No, just a matter of bad luck. She told me so herself. <laughs> Now here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a strange attack, a scared girl, a hunt in the dark, and 13 knots make a noose. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.